You ever think like, man, it would be cool to have a simple MoGraph rig that looked like Mushu and the Chain Chomp from Mario had a baby, and that that baby could dynamically look at stuff? No? It's just me? Well, whatever. It's my channel. Let's do this. All right, so basically this rig works by using a connect shape to generate a dynamic connection between two points that can then be used by a duplicator with a path distribution and duplicating body segments along it. So we can see here, I have two ellipses. One is for the head and one is for the butt. And then connecting those is a connect shape. And I am on the latest beta 1.4 B4. So my connect shape has a few more options than the current one, uh, but you can still do it using the basic one, or you could even use this technique uh, with just like a custom path and animating the endpoints. So if we look into the body path, the source is the head and the target is the butt. In these two tabs, I left everything the same and I just updated this stroke, but later we'll turn it off so it doesn't really matter. In the shape, I have it set to auto bezier and I have the auto bezier mode to projection vectors and this is the new thing in the beta. How this new bezier mode works is it has a start point and an end point. And here we can see our head, which is the source, its line always points away from the center of the composition. And the butt, which is the target, always points towards the center of the column. And so this allows you to get your different shapes. And if you change these values, you know, you can get a more aggressive curve. Um, but the higher that you change this value, as you go to this other side of the comp, it starts to go out the other way, which maybe that's what you're looking for. Uh, for this example, I'm just gonna keep them both at the default 0.5. So next what we have is a duplicator set to the path distribution mode. And all I've done is I just made this kind of blue circle for now to use as the body. So the blue circles are the body and I can update how many or how few there are. So if you want a more solid uh, neck shape, you know, you can kind of create a bunch. And then you'll see as you move the head around, all of the shapes, all of the body shapes stay on the path and dynamically move around, uh, you know, as the path is curving and stuff. And so you will see that as you stretch it out, you will start to get a little bit of space between your body segments. So that's a limitation of this rig, um, but it's also sort of a potential look. So now once we have this set up, all we need to do is go into the body segments and then any updates that we do to that will be reflected in the body uh, duplicator path as well. So what I did for the other dragon was basically I have my basic body segment here. I'm just gonna duplicate that, make that a child. And then this ellipse, I'm just gonna click on semicircle. Actually, you can make it an arc. I'm gonna give this a different color real quick. So let's give it the yellow color. And let's pull the inner radius in and then the outer radius to be the same as whatever our ellipse is. So that it kind of just nests inside. And actually let's change this blue to white. So it's a little bit easier to see the differences here. And again, if we just kind of uh, duplicate that and pull that in here, you know, like this ellipse, we can change it to yellow. And then uh, actually let's shrink the scale. And then this body segment, maybe. And so now we have sort of this look to it. So I have this design for the body. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a spike. So I'm just going to make a polygon shape, set the size to three, uh, slap on a bevel deformer and let's make this white and then shrink it way down and then push it up and I'm actually gonna make it the height taller so that it's kind of more pointy move it just a little bit more up and then uh, we're gonna again just put that on the body segment and so now with the body segment updated to this let's hide that and we can take a look and we see now our, our dragon body has updated. Uh, everything is kind of pointing the wrong way though. And so what we can do is on the body duplicator, we will just change the shape rotation until it lines up to the top, how we want it. You can see how everything is, all the pieces are kind of rotating with the path. Uh, so this, this front one is acting a little bit funky. Uh, but that's mostly because um, if we view the path, it starts to push out that way. So it would make the individual body pieces kind of rotate the other way. So, you know, again, there, there are limitations to this rig, uh, but you can just play around with it and change settings uh, to fit your needs. And I'm just going to decrease the amount of body segments just because I like the look a little bit better. And again, when it stretches out, it's going to start to 
uh, separate, but that also gives it that chain chomp kind of look. And one thing that I can do to help prevent this last one from flipping down to just change the length a bit, but you can see here it's pulling from the, the bottom side. So if we just hit flip, now it's pulling from the top side. So basically I'm just making it so that the, the last item on this line can't go further than 90% of the line. Well, actually, let's go, let's go to 95. So now as this is pushing out, it doesn't flip around the bottom side anymore. So it kind of makes that a little nicer. So next is a quick example. Um, I'm going to make another triangle here, same thing as before. And so this I'm going to use as a leg and probably the arm just for this example. So what we're going to do is on this legs position, we're going to add a behavior and add a pathfinder. And in this pathfinder, we are going to put the connect shape body path. And so now it'll be on here and we can change the travel of it wherever we want. And so here I want it right here at the bottom because these are the legs and I will rotate the legs to be down. And here I'm just going to duplicate this as well, but I'm going to delete this pathfinder and connect this other pathfinder into the other legs position. So now they're at the same thing, but this leg I can have at a different rotation, kind of like this. And the reason I'm doing that is so that there's just one pathfinder to move both of them. Put these, I'm just going to group these together as legs. And now I'm going to put them underneath the body. And so now you can see there are some legs and they stick with this path, no matter where it moves. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these legs, I'm going to duplicate it and just rename this to arms here in this other pathfinder. What we can do now is we can adjust it to say, okay, the arms are probably going to be here and I'm actually just going to, and then I'm just going to go in and change the rotation of the arms to be something that makes a little bit more sense. And so now as we move these around, you can see the arms stay relative to the line and the legs as well. Instead of going through the steps to recreate the head, I'm just going to copy and paste the one that I had and go through it and show you how it works. So the head starts out with just an arc shape and I put a noise on the end angle and this causes it to go back and forth like this in a kind of random way. And this is what I'm using to kind of make the mouth open and close. Then I put that into a duplicator, set distribution to point, add the count to 11 and then give a random rotation to kind of offset the teeth. Now, one thing to note is that I have this head arc shape and I put it inside of a folder and then I put the folder inside of the duplicator. The reason that I did this is so that all of the teeth will move the exact same way. If this was just put in on its own, each tooth would move individually and it wouldn't really look like a mouth. So this noise here is only supplying a single value because the, the folder kind of keeps everything as one unit. And so now each unit will have the same noise because it's inside of a folder. And so then offset the shape rotation, just put a random in there and then the shape scale, I put a stagger to kind of pull it in. And so now you get this kind of head shape with random teeth that's looking like it's chomping. To make it more interesting, I added some horns. And again, for this, let's, uh, we'll change these to white. And I added an eye here. And then you can see that there's still like parts of the parts of the main head shape look kind of weird. And so then the last thing that I did was I put in this circle shape. And again, we will change that to white so that now it all looks kind of consistent, opening and closing the mouth and there's no gaps or weird holes or anything. And then finally, what I did is on the duplicator itself on the rotation, I put a look at. So that is what makes the dragon actually look at this piece of fruit because this duplicator here is or has the look at on its rotation pointed to the fruit. So now what we can do to connect the head to the actual body on the duplicator, we can set the, the head position, this duplicator's position to be the same thing as the head controller. So we put that here and then start to move the head around. You see that the head follows right now. It's looking at sort of the center of the composition. And I think that's just because the look at doesn't have anything in it yet. So let's give it something to look at. We will just make this red square, put it here. And then here at the look at, we will just put in this rectangle shape. So now as we move this around, the head is always going to look at this square. We are going to add a outline and put it down below everything except for our background. So here in the input shapes, we are going to input the body. 
And to add the legs, we need to add each piece kind of individually. And so we're gonna do that for the arms and the legs. Next, let's add the head. But you'll see if you put in the group, it doesn't actually do anything. And so if we go in here and we add the duplicator, you'll see that it wraps around the duplicator, but it doesn't actually wrap around its children. And so instead of going through and adding in every little thing, let's remove that from the list. So to make sure that the head has a nice outline around everything, what we're gonna do is we're going to add a custom shape. And in this custom shape, we are just going to toss the head four folder, and we're going to put that custom shape into the outline input shapes. Now you'll see there's this weird outline here. And so if we take a look inside of our head folder, the main part of the head, this is actually where it is um, in space because we moved it around earlier, right? So all we need to do is reset this to zero, zero. And you can see, you can still actually see it here a little bit, but turns out if you change the scale, it doesn't actually affect uh, the duplicator because the duplicator kind of deals with its own transform stuff. So now we can hide that folder. We have our custom shape input into the outlines. So now if we open up the outline, we can go to the fill tab, change its color. For this one, I'm gonna use this dark gray color. And then you can go into shape and change the width to be, you know, whatever you want, anything ridiculous. And now you've got your head that kind of automatically goes. What we can do is we can turn off the body path and the butt and the head. Uh, but the head is still something that we want to control. I'm just gonna put the head on top so it's easier to select. So now as you move that around, your dragon will always look at the look at object. The body kind of moves around nicely. The mouth, because it's a noise, it'll actually automatically move as it's moving. Or you can see that as we move the timeline, it still kind of moves. Um, other things you could do is you could probably have the eyes be masked and also have a look at so if the eyes move around as well if you wanted to. Um, there's lots of different things that you can do with this rig, but that was pretty cool and pretty simple. Not that difficult to set up and you can get a pretty cool look. So the last thing that we want to do is to animate this thing. And a great way to do that is just the automatic mouse animation technique. So basically what we're going to do is I'm going to lock all the layers just so that I don't accidentally select anything I don't want. I'm going to turn on this head layer. And then if I hit spacebar, so the timeline starts playing and I click and drag and I'm moving the head around, I can I can kind of just animate what I want and Cavalry will remember these positions. Okay. So now you see I'm no longer dragging it around. It has looped the playback and it remembered all of these positions. And you can see here that it's added the keyframes for everything too. And then what I like to do is at the end here, because when you're moving around with the mouse, it's almost impossible to line it up exactly where you were at the beginning. I left a little bit of space and I'll just come here to the end. I will select these keyframes just to do control C, control V. And so now it starts and ends at the same point. So it'll have kind of a decent loop there. And so now I can turn off the head because I don't want to see that anymore. And let's go to our rectangle shape, which is our look at object. And here we can do the same thing. We're going to put some keyframes on the position and then I'm going to hit space bar to start it playing. And then as this moves around, you see that now the head updates its look at position based on our little fruit thing here. So you can kind of just go step by step and make kind of a fun dynamic little thing. But there you have it. You have created your very own Mushu Chain Chomp mashup. If you like that, please subscribe and like and uh, what's the other one?